Welcome, Josuki, to Metalarium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about this new first, first plant, Ilius Press, obviously, all the things related to the nuclear war productions and obviously more things related to the, to the general in metal. So we can start by asking, so how was, who motivated you to create this Helios Press? Yeah, so the idea of Helios Press uh, was something that was kind of in my head for a bit. Um, I wanted to go into manufacturing and in 2019, I bought some printing equipment and I was trying to learn how to use them uh, but then COVID hit and 2020 was kind of messed up. I couldn't do much with the printing presses. And then as a family, we decided to move out of California, which meant that I had to get rid of the printing equipment since they were so big and bulky. There was no way to easily move them. So, you know, I spent the last two years in Texas um, kind of readjusting to the new state. Um and in the meantime, this idea of having some sort of a manufacturing connection to this business was always in my head. So when I visited my friend's factory in Italy, um, that sort of solidified my desire to start Helios Press because I saw that he was very passionate and he was very he was very much um, into the manufacturing process, much like I'm into the production and running of the record label NWN. So I knew that I could do both in parallel since I was going to partner with a friend of mine. So I'm still going to continue doing NWN. Helios Press will exist as a completely different business entity. Um, yeah, so that, that was the impetus for starting Helios Press. There were other factors like working with overseas pressing plants in Czech Republic, China, um, just cost a lot of money in terms of shipping. And it doesn't seem like oil prices are going down anytime soon. So to cut down on the cost of shipping and also to bring back manufacturing to my home state was very attractive to me as well. Hmm. Okay, interesting, interesting to know about this kind of details of Helios Press. So, mm -hmm. um, what, what is one? Well, the next question I think is one of the common ones in these aspects. So, why, what do you motivate you to create this press to release CDs, vinyls, this kind of stuff, in a world that now are there are less consuming physical material? Um. So you're talking about the the world of digital streaming mostly, yes, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. I don't really see it competing so much with physical media per se, maybe compact discs because they're digital and it doesn't have the same level of um, artistic value as 12 inch vinyl records do. So physical media is very special in that you cannot, once it's made, you cannot change it, right? With digital media that's on the inter internet, companies can come in and remove songs. Companies can also say that you cannot stream that album because of this or that. Maybe it's because of, you know, offensive stuff in one country or another. If it's overly satanic, maybe some, some countries will ban it outright. If it's politically incorrect, some countries will ban it for that reason. Whatever the case, digital streaming is at the mercy of these bigger companies out there, like Spotify, like YouTube, like Bandcamp. These are all very useful tools, you know especially for marketing and for younger people sampling new albums. I do it all the time, right? I'm listening to music on Bandcamp or YouTube just depends on what I want to hear. It's very easy and it's a very passive type of listening. There is a big difference between listening to a physical media, especially 12 inch records and streaming music. With streaming, all you get is the sound and it's usually inferior sound because it's 
compressed, it's digitized, and it's coming through the internet. So it's low quality bit rate streaming of music in a very passive manner. When you're listening to a physical media that's done well, see, this is the operative. So it has to be done well in order for it to be meaningful. So if the cover art work is shit, if the layout is shit and the audio quality is shit, then I don't really see the point of, you know, having physical media for something like that. But if it's done correctly, you know, records that are done correctly, let's say like Iron Maiden first album, 70s pressing. If you put that on and look at the cover and look at the band photos on the back, it's a completely different type of listening experience than if you were just picking up a CD or even just streaming online. So you get the bigger artwork and you, and the other factor that I really like is that with vinyl 12 inch records, you have to listen to it in a manner that the, the artist intended. So from the beginning to the end, right? With audio streaming online, you can just skip. And a lot of times people just put on songs, just pick and choose songs. And that's not how the artist intended for the album to be li listened to. I'm all about respecting the artist and respecting how the format should be treated. So if an album has to be, you know, 30 minutes, 50 minutes per side, then most likely the artist, if they're good, sort of mapped out how the songs will be played. And they often put a very strong song at the very beginning of each side. And then a very strong song at the end of side B. This is this is usually the case. And it's not, not always the case, but that's how usually it's written. For example, Blasphemy's Fallen Angel Doom starts on side B with the song Ritual, which is one of their strongest songs. In fact, when they play live now, they always end their sets with Ritual because it's such a great song. It's so iconic to them, but they put it on the beginning of side B. And my theory is that they did that because they wanted to come in very strong and, and basically punching on side B at the very beginning. So all of these things are very much thought through by the artists, musicians. And I think it's important that we honor how the albums should be listened to not to skip over from one digital file to the other, right? So that's that's my long-winded take on why physical media is better. I mean, so in summary, is because it forces you to listen to something as intended by the artist. The other is it's a complete package from the visual art to the audio art to the uh, to the the written art. You know, the lyrics are basically written art. So. If the lyrics are included, then you can sit there, look at the lyrics or read the lyrics, look at the cover and listen to the album all at the same time. I mean, you could make the argument, maybe, you know, you could do this online as well. If you can go to the metal archives and just bring up the album cover and they usually have lyrics there as well, but it's not exactly the same. And also going back to digital files and digital censorship, there could come a time when you know, certain governments governments say um, all satanic or anything dark or anything related to death is gone off the internet in this country. And it's not far-fetched, you know? Like, uh, Canada is cracking down on certain type of uh, language use online. You cannot post anything in social media, for example, if you're in Canada about any sort of news um, so it's the, the online censorship is here to stay. Um, so I think for everyone's sake, especially in extreme metal, you know, we're dealing with topics of death and destruction and, and, and occult and Satanism and gore and anything that's kind of deviant, right? This is a cathartic type of musical experience. So I do believe that censorship will probably come knocking on the metal's door again, just like it did in the late 80s and 90s in the US. 
it will probably happen again. Um, so it's best to just put it on. Hello? Not here. So then, oh. Okay, you for you yeah, frozen. So that's fine. That's why I'm long winded. Yeah. Okay, you frozen the last time. Well, I will cut off this last part. Hmm. So no, no, talking about now about your background in this case, because you came as, as well, as I saw in your hoodie, you came from you came from the extreme metal bands like the Beherit, you mentioned our blasphemy, this kind of stuff. And also now Helios Press is a is a press a vinyl press plant. But um, how but um, what will be the major focus of production of your Helios Press? It will be only metal or extreme metal, or will you have other sources away from metal? Because this is a different business that I'm a I'm a metalhead, and this Helios Press is another kind of another kind of business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a completely separate business from Nuclear War now. And so we will obviously my reach is only to the metal fans, right? I'm most people that know me. They just know me because of metal. So initially, I will do my marketing to the metal people, like I'm doing right now with the fundraiser for Helios. And by the way, the fundraiser starts March March 1st, and it's going to be through our website, nwnprod.com. So initially, it will be marketed to the metal community. But the plan with Helios Press is to uh to not be so metal centric we will branch out to anything we will press for anyone and to repeat myself um we're not here to censor right we are here to archive art so we will press anything that you, that you bring to us it doesn't matter if it's rap music it could be spoken word poetry comedy it could be um i don't know RMB, gospel music, Christian music. We don't really give a shit. We are just here to manufacture quality records. And that's our mission with Helios Press. Mm. Okay. Okay, okay. And now, obviously, with this aspect, I, I think Nuclear War, Nuclear War Now Productions will release all the, the vinyl stuff with you, or are you still using another kind of plan? Yeah, so yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. We will press only through Helios Press once it's set up. It wouldn't make sense for me to press at a different factory unless our factory is unable to do certain things like uh, shape picture discs or shape records. We can't do that yet. Um, yeah, there are certain types of things we can't do. Like we didn't buy 7-inch or 10-inch molds. So if I need to do a seven inch or 10 inch, then I obviously would have to go somewhere else or buy the mold. The mold itself is like $10,000. So it's a major investment. So mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll, we will perfect the art of making 12 inch records first before we venture out into other formats like seven inches and 10 inches. Mm, okay. Into this aspect, when well, you mentioned one thing that in the Helios Press will be well, will release mm, different kind of music. It's normally for this. And how do you well? And, and perhaps do you have something? How do you say it in English? Mm, well, how perhaps with with this new Helios Press, you will focus more on the releases that you liked in the other styles, or perhaps you will release anything that you come with the money, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So, so the language you're using is wrong. We are not releasing anything. We're just a service provider for pressing Correct. records. Yeah. So, so other labels and artists will come to us and we will press whatever they give us. So let's say that um, Numero Group comes to us. It's a big label out of Chicago. Numero Group really? comes to us and says, press this. Usker Du record, it's an old kind of indie punk band, will say, sure, we will press that. I personally don't give a shit about Husker Du, but we will press that. Let's say a rap artist, some independent rap artist comes from Houston and says, press my record, here's whatever, 
we will press that and we will try to do our best to press rap records. You know, we're just pressing sound onto vinyl records. We don't really care what is being pressed. Obviously, I'm a metal fan, so I would rather service metal people all day long. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to be limited to just metal. Mm, okay. Well, you mentioned me about the, uh, the in March 1st, you will release a Kickstarter campaign for the Helios Press. So with what kind mm -hmm. of well, what kind of promotion will you prepare for this racing campaign? What kind of deals with the new labels, with the new music, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, to press the yeah. Music. Yeah, so first of all, we're not doing Kickstarter. Um that was an initial idea, but we abandoned Kickstarter because I already have an audience of 50,000 people. So I don't really need Kickstarter. Kickstarter is for people who have no one, right? They're just doing something and they have no audience. So Kickstarter comes with a built-in audience that are interested in funding different projects. But my audience is already there because I've been in business for 24 years and I have social media presence. So, you know, I can just market directly to my audience, which is what I'm doing now. We will run the Kickstarter like campaign, so fundraiser campaign, through our website. And basically, kicks, the way that Kickstarter works is you just have a bunch of products and services as pre-orders, right? So you can have a record, and it just says, if you, if you back this campaign, you know, you get this record in six to seven months or something. That's, that's essentially what Kickstarter does. It's just like an e-commerce site that um that takes long-term pre-orders so i can easily do that myself um i already have an online shop so we're starting to build a fundraiser page within the shop and we will have very limited um custom type of records so we're doing one for blast for me um and these are all going to come with metal covers we're doing one for Conqueror. We're doing one for Sabbath from Japan, one for Goat Lord, and then we will do another one for Departure Chandelier. So all five records will be done in a similar fashion, sheet metal cover, silk screened, yellow and black marble, sunburst, solar flare colored vinyl. Each copy will come hand numbered and uh, basically dedicated to the person who supports us. So it will have that person's name. Um, in addition, it will have an insert with all the backers' names in it. So, you know, I like to say that everyone's names will be attached to the record. So there's no way to really sell that record. Otherwise, you'll look like a poser. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's, we have other services like discounts from Helios, discounts from NWN, discounts from Enormous Door Mastering, T-shirts, patches, tote bags, um, set of all five records instead of a box, stuff like that. So we'll offer a nice range of uh, products and services at different price ranges. So even um, people with less money, you know, in their pockets can contribute to the campaign. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's starting March 1st. And the link is on nwnprod.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you mentioned one thing. With the demand that vinyl records have in the world for collectors now, there's a lot of people are collecting vinyls with different colors, etc., etc. You explain me the value of that 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 is that is vinyl that this vinyl press have for you because you started as a friend you started by new your way so that but let's go a little further because in the end a new plan this means money that's that's the that's the, that's the reality in general so so how you can separate the idea of passion of release vinyl as a as a metalhead with the press idea. Say it again. So what's the question? So how can you separate the idea of 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 do of doing this kind of thing for passion and obviously with a with a press idea for money? Oh yeah. So 
when you're running a business of any type, you have to be mindful of the the bills that come in. So, right. So you can never really separate the two. You know, if you run only on passion, then you'll go out of business very quickly, probably, because you'll make stupid decisions that are emotionally charged. So you have to remove emotion and really rely more on logic. And the biz the best business people are ones that still keep the passion for music, you know, especially with the record label. I see the ones that are just releasing records that sell, right? And and those are the ones that I think are boring. And I think fans will see right through it when labels are just releasing stuff that sells. You know, the more commercial the label, the more boring it becomes to people in the underground, especially. So there is a fine balance between running a business and making sure that the bills are paid and making sure that your employees are paid, making sure that the bands are paid versus releasing what you think will sell and how many to press. So I guess the latter is what matters the most when you're running a business, because if you overpress, right? So if you press like a thousand copies when you only need 250, then you're spending more initially. And you also have to deal with space in the warehouse for storing those records. So, those things are kind of two things that you have to juggle, you know, cash in, cash out, and how to balance your musical taste versus the business reality of having to sell those physical media. Because just because you like the band doesn't mean that other people will buy the record. Hmm. Right. Okay. So you kind of have to balance the two. Um, Sometimes it's a difficult juggle, but I do my best to release things that I like only. So even if the band is popular and it sells well, um, I will not sign them if I don't like them. It doesn't make sense from a business perspective, maybe, but, you know, it's otherwise it loses the core mission of running a record label. Um yeah, I mean, so I only release things that I like, and the core mission is to curate music that I like and to shape the future of musical taste. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, as a, uh, as long as things grow with this new plan, that's normally because it will be more successful during the next coming years. And for this aspect, if someone, because in in, in correct me if I'm wrong, because when I when I see the the press note or the press release for this Helios Press. Uh, the, the the press release say that you are only focused on vinyl and this kind of this kind of thing. But as as I mentioned, if the if the Helios Press continue to grow or grow grow, if some label if some band ask you about to release on CD tape, are you available to release on those formats too? We're not a broker. We're a factory. So. Mm -hmm. Our factory will have four vinyl pressing machines. We did not buy any CD duplicating machines or tape duplicating machines. Maybe that's in the future, but for right now, Helios Press will only make records. And if customers come to us asking for other formats, I have plenty of friends in the industry, you know, so I can just say, if you want CDs and tapes, just go to A to Z Media. Or if you want, you know, tapes made in Canada, then you go to duplicate.ca. Or if you're in Europe, then you go to Brutalica, whatever their website is. But yeah, so there are many options for people to make tapes and CDs. Um, I don't, I don't see that as a bottleneck. It's never been something that takes a very long time to mass produce. Records, on the other hand. Uh, we had lots of, you know, issues during the pandemic and it's a lot bigger and heavier. So the cost of moving goods, you know, a thousand records costs anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000 to move from Europe to the U.S. That's excluding taxes. So you could be looking at spending over $2,000 
in just shipping from Europe. So when you consider those numbers, it makes more sense to just bring the manufacturing back to where you're located. Um, so our primary focus is to serve globally, but I think naturally we'll just end up serving mostly Americans or North Americans, I should say. So Mexicans as well and Canadians. Mm, okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting date. Oh, internet not interesting things to know. So we're very close to enter this interview, Josuke. And for this aspect, well, what are the future plans for Healer Press? You mentioned about the campaign in March, and perhaps you will do more, 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 more campaigns in the next coming months. Who knows? What kind of plans do you have in general for Helios Press? Um, so yeah, the fundraiser campaign is to raise money for the infrastructure of Helios. We already have the building and the machinery. So we'll need to get a boiler and a chiller system. And those are not cheap. We're looking at maybe $300,000 that we have to raise for that. Because there's a lot of engineering you have to do, all the piping, electrical work. So the boiler and chiller by themselves are probably about seventy thousand dollars. So, you know, hundred and forty thousand or hundred and fifty thousand dollars just for the machinery, just for the boiler and chiller, and then another hundred and fifty thousand dollars probably for the infrastructure. So all the piping, engineering, and electrical work. And then you also have to make a room for the boiler, which costs money. You also have to make a room for the chiller. So it's not a cheap project. And on top of that, we also have to do all kinds of other little things like renovating the bathroom, renovating the office, getting pallet racks, um, forklift, you know, basic, basic needs of running a warehouse. Um, so yeah, we still have ways to go and we're trying to raise money in many different ways, not just by doing fundraiser, but we will do a gig and well, actually that's part of the fundraiser, but uh, we might take out a loan as well. So we'll pull, we're basically pulling every lever possible to get this thing off the ground as soon as possible. The target is end of the year, but maybe we'll go into 2025. Who knows? Um, but no matter what, it will happen. And I'm very thankful that I have the support of the metal on the ground. And I've been talking to some people on the experimental noise scene as well and punk scene. And it seems like everyone is very excited that, you know, somebody from the scene is doing something about it, you know, because most of these factories are owned by big companies. There aren't too many metal heads involved in manufacturing of uh, vinyl records. The only factory that I know of in the US that's owned by somebody from the underground is Cascade. And uh, that's from TKO. Um, they're doing a great job as well. But I think they're also kind of maxed out in terms of capacity. So the more factories that are created, um, especially factories that are focused on supporting independent music of every every genre um i think that is the you know final goal of filios we want to support the underground of every genre mm -hmm. okay and one of the last questions uh how do you see the future of the cd vinyl and tape plants in 10 years because music in general has undergone many changes and how to listen music, how to how to listen now and now, also, mm -hmm. and even now the, the people reach as you mentioned it, the digital platforms. So many things change as you are creating this new enterprise in these aspects. So how do you see the future of this business in 10, 20 years? Well, I think it's de it depends on where you're located because people consume music and art in different ways. Where where are you sitting right now? Which well, country I'm, are you? Well, I am Peru, but usually the website is in Mexico, Colombia, and Peru. Okay, so yeah, I, I guess that's why I see the Hades logo in the background there. Yeah, I've worked <laughs> with Hades before. Um, so 
Yeah, I mean, it just depends, right? Because there's uh, there are a lot of different factors, socioeconomic factors. So let's say that people in the U.S., the younger generation is so used to listening to digital streaming. But I see it's I see this also changing because with with digital streaming, it's kind of a passive way of listening to music and they have nothing to hold. So I see kids buying records and then, you know, having it on their shelf and maybe listening to it once in a while. And but they're taking pictures with their records, posting it on social media. I see a lot of this happening, which is OK by me. And as long as they're buying the physical media, that's fine by me. But I'm guessing that they're buying the physical media, but listening more to digital streaming. I could be totally wrong, but I get that feeling from younger people. Now, in terms of um, physical media, you know, going away, I don't think it's going to go away in the metal scene or punk scene or noise scene because it plays such a key role in the identity of the metalhead. You know, as a metalhead, we have metal shirts and we have metal CDs and records. That's kind of how we identify ourselves. We we kind of live, we have this, this subculture of underground metal and uh, there is, I, I think there is some responsibility that we all feel to supporting the underground bands and labels. So I don't know any metalhead who doesn't own any CDs or LPs. Maybe some people who have gone through some terrible financial situations and they have to get rid of everything. But even those people, like I know a couple of people who got divorced and they had to sell everything because the divorce was very costly. But now they're like buying stuff again and, you know, they didn't get rid of their T-shirts or anything. So they still support the scene in different ways. Um, I feel like with the cost of cassette tapes going up, now I'm seeing more CD sales. So maybe CDs are making a comeback right now as cassette prices are increasing. In fact, it costs it costs like twice as much to make a cassette in the US right now. So to make one cassette professionally done, it's $4. For one CD professionally done, um, if you do at least 500, it's $2 each. So the cost is kind of stupid because you <laughs> usually sell the tapes for a little bit less right the cds are usually maybe like ten dollars to fifteen dollars now tapes are anywhere from 12 to 15 dollars in most distros you know unless it's like some very old stock or some it's, it's a reduced price most people are selling tapes at the same price or a little bit more than cds so i'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing for cassettes i feel like it's not a very good thing vinyl sales have just increased more releases are coming out um there might be a bubble but people have been speculating about the bursting bubble of vinyl for a very long time and it still hasn't happened so i i don't foresee it happening at least in the underground scenes of metal punk noise i think those three scenes will always support the vinyl format just because of the size and the nostalgia and the tradition of putting albums on vinyl 12 inch records. Seven inch sales have gone down as prices started to skyrocket on those. So I don't really press seven inches myself for nuclear war now anymore because they just cost too much to make. Um, same with 10 inches, they cost the same price as 12 inches. So I don't see any reason to press uh, 10 inches anymore. I just do 12 inches, even if it's less than 30 minutes, I just put it on 12 inches. Yeah. So yeah, I don't really foresee vinyl going away. There might be some slowdown on the tape side. CDs seem to be coming back. So yeah, overall, I think physical media is doing pretty well right now, considering how bad the economy is. You know, I mean, I don't know how the economy is in Peru, but in the U.S., we were experiencing terrible inflation and uh, high interest rates and um, 
I think the job numbers are not very good either. So it seems like we're in a bad recession right now, but young people are still coming into the shop and buying records. So, you know, I think art and music is one of the last things that people will cut out of their lives, even if they're poor, hmm. right? Because what else is there to live for if you can't go to shows or buy CDs and buy vinyl? You know, those are not that expensive at the end of the day. You know, if you have $20 and I mean, at least in the U.S., if you go, if you want to go see a movie, it's at least $15 now. So records are maybe like $20 or $25. So it's not, it's not much more to buy a record than to go see a movie, which is like a one-time experience and if you buy popcorn or if you buy candy on top of that, then you end up spending like $25 anyway. Um, yeah. So that's how I see it. And it seems like even during the pandemic, people were buying lots of CDs and vinyl and T-shirts. And so it never really slowed down. Um, I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. And, you know, as a scene, as somebody in the scene and as a fan, I think it's important that we all do our part and just keep the media alive. Um, that's what I always tell young people. Just think long term, you know, like when you're older, you definitely want to you definitely want to have the physical media as as archive of the music out there, whatever you like. Now, if the music sucks, then obviously like it doesn't have to be on physical media, but if the media, you know, if the album is great, if it's something that you really love and uh, you treasure, you should definitely buy it on physical media. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Yosuke, the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoy this one like me. I, I know many details about the US, uh, US market there. So uh, perhaps do you want to add something to well, the new in commerce for Helios Press and obviously Metalirum followers in Latin America, especially. Mm. Well, I, I first want to say hails to the Peruvian maniacs out there, anal vomit, um, goat semen, uh, Hades, and whoever else that I'm in touch with. Uh, yeah, hello to everyone in Peru. I know you guys have some of the best underground metal scene out there. So I, w I hope to go down there one time and uh, see some of these gigs.